If you're brand new to OBS, your transitions probably look like this. See how boring this is? You wanna be boring? Why be boring when your streams can look like this? Today, we're gonna spice up your stream with these animated transitions like you're seeing on screen right now, where your camera is shrinking and growing to different positions on the screen. And this is all possible with an OBS plugin called Move. This one won my award for the greatest OBS plugin of all time, the Gobspote. I reference this plugin all the time, but I still don't think people realize just how powerful the Move plugin is. Because yes, you could do these smooth animated transitions where your camera shrinks and grows between scenes, but you could also slide sources around the screen. You could animate filters like the 3D effect filter or the rounded corners filter. You could also make sources react to the sound of your voice, track objects to your face, even control a PTZ camera. It's way too much to fit into one video. And so that's why today we're starting a new series. Nutty's OBS Move Plugin Masterclass, or Knobs Pumk for short. But we don't need to scare you with all that complex stuff today. Let's just start nice and easy. Today, I'm only gonna show you how to get the plugin installed, do your first basic animated transitions where your camera shrinks and grows between scenes, and I'll also show you some little tricks that even if you're an advanced user, you're gonna wanna pay attention to because there's a lot of really small details that you might be missing out on. If you wanna do any of that crazier stuff, we'll cover them in future videos, so stay tuned, subscribe so you don't miss out. Yes, that's called blackmail, and yes, it works. But first, a shout out from this week's sponsor, VIP SED Keys. If you guys are looking to save, don't skip this part. Looks bad in my YouTube analytics. You can get a Windows 11 Pro license for as little as $21. Just make sure to use code NUTTY at checkout to get 30% off. And if you wanna save a little bit more money, you can get a Windows 10 key for as low as $15. And those keys can be upgraded to Windows 11 completely for free. You can pay using a secure payment method like PayPal. They'll send you over an activation code, put that in your Windows settings, and you're good to go. Check out VIP SED keys down below, and thank you again for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's get this plugin installed. So head on over to the link down below. You'll be taken to this page. Just click on the download button and get the Windows installer. If you're on a Mac or Linux machine, you're on your own, buddy, okay? I don't use any of that garbage. But just get the Windows installer and go through the setup. It's it's pretty straightforward. If you know how to install OBS, you know how to install the plugin. If you, if you don't know how to install OBS, why are you here? After that, go ahead and restart OBS. I've made some basic scenes here. And as you can see, it's just using the normal fade transition that comes by default. And we're gonna change that. So go over to your scene transitions doc. If you don't see that there, go up to docs and turn on scene transitions. And it should say fade or you can set it to cut here. But if you click on the plus button, you can add more transitions. And one of the options should be move. If you don't see that option there, then you didn't install the plugin correctly. So go back and do it again. Add that move transition and just press okay and okay here. We'll come back to this menu in a second, but it should start working right away. So if we change scenes now, it's all animated. I'll actually slow the animation down here. Just set it to 750 milliseconds and you can see it's already animating. So yeah, you're, you're pretty much done already. There's, um, that that's it. All right, see ya. I'm a bit of a perfectionist though, so let's change some settings. I don't actually like the default settings. I don't like how when stuff disappears, it just goes off to the side or when stuff reappears, it comes in from the left. So if you click on the three dots and go to properties, we can actually change how the animations animate. And the properties are broken up into three different sections because there's three different scenarios that can happen when you're changing scenes. Let's say you're switching scenes from scene A to scene B and both scene A and B have your camera on them. These would be matched items because both scenes have your camera. But let's say your camera only exists on scene B and it's not on scene A. 
Well, this would be an appearing item because when you transition, your camera should be appearing on scene B. If your camera is only on scene A, but not on scene B, then this would be a disappearing item because your camera disappears as it goes to scene B. That's what each of these sections are for. So we got matched items, appearing items, and disappearing items. So if we go to appearing items, for example, we'll see that the position is set to center left. So that means when we change scenes, all of the new sources are gonna appear from the center left of the screen. So if I were to go from this blank scene to a scene that has just my camera, you see how my camera just appeared from the left side? So we'll do it again. Appears from the left side, and then when it disappears, it goes off to the right side. And that's because if we look under disappearing items, the position is set to center right. I don't like that, okay? So I actually turn the position to none for both disappearing and appearing items. And so now you'll notice if I change from this blank scene to my camera scene, it's just gonna grow from the middle and then disappear from the middle. And then if I was to move my camera, it's just gonna disappear from wherever the camera is. And it's, it's never gonna move. It's not gonna like go off to the side or anything like that. Personally, I don't like that zoom either. I think, I think it looks kind of like, looks kind of tacky when stuff just like zooms in and out. So I turn that off too. So go into properties and there's a zoom checkbox. I like to just turn that off for both appearing and disappearing. And I also like to change the transition from none to fade. Uh, and I actually like to change that for everything. So we'll change it there. And also for matched items, I like to turn it on uh, to fade as well. And so now if you look at our transitions, if I go from my just chatting to my gaming scene, we're still gonna get that, uh, you know, that animated transition, but if I switch to a scene that doesn't have my camera, instead of my camera zooming out, it's just going to fade away. And I think that looks much better. So yeah, those are all the settings that I like to change every time I do a new install of OBS. Just to summarize, set the transition to everything to fade, turn the zoom off for everything, and set the position for everything to none. And I think that makes the transitions look the best. That's that's the way that I like setting it up. It even works if you crop and rotate your camera. So we'll just hold the Alt key and I'll just crop my camera a bit and use the circle to like rotate it. And when I do a scene transition, it still, it still does the transition. Everything just works. But what if you have two sources that are not the same source, but you still want move transition to map them together. So for example, here I got my just chatting scene and then I got this scene here where my camera is a circle. So how do I get my camera to sort of morph from circle to rectangle and then back to circle again. In case you didn't know, there's a plugin called Source Clone that allows you to create exact copies of other sources so that you could apply filters to that copy without affecting the original source. And the same developer that made Source Clone also made Move Transition, so everything just works. So Move Transition recognizes sources that are also clones and automatically matches them up together, which is why my camera here, when I change this scene here, even though the clone and the camera are like not the same, they still match together. It works especially well with the NVIDIA background removal filter. I'm actually using it right now. If I switch to my just chatting scene, you see how the background just appears. And then if I go to the green screen, the background just melts away. Here, let me slow down the transition. Just chatting scene, slowly comes into view. Green screen, slowly melts away. That is such a slick effect that I haven't really seen other people do. So don't copy me. So I want to be unique. Now, if you have two sources that are completely different, they're not even clones of each other, you can still match them up together. For example, I've got this scene here that has my camera, and then I've got this scene that has my snap camera, which has me as President Joe Biden. You can see that because these are technically different sources altogether, move transition doesn't match them up together. And so that's why we just get this fade animation. But we can actually match them together if we go over to that second source, go into filters, and we're gonna add a move transition override. And here we can actually tell OBS 
what to match this to. So if I want this to match to my webcam, now if I change scenes, it still does the transition, even though they're completely different scenes. How cool is that? But yeah, that's it. Now you've got these cool animated transitions. Um, I think I'll leave it there. Am I overwhelming you guys? I feel like I'm overwhelming you guys. Hey, are you, did you tab out? Come back. Open my tab again. Talk to me. Uh, did I overwhelm you guys? Let me know if you like this style of video. I'm trying to take a more casual approach instead of having to heavily script all my videos. Um, also, if you want to follow along with the rest of the Move Transition Masterclass as I release more videos, then uh, I ain't begging you for subs. That's weak. You just do it and without me having to beg you for it. Come catch me on Twitch. I stream at least twice a week and uh, I basically never play games. So I'm really only just answering your streamer questions. So, um, or don't, you can follow here because I also stream here full time as well. So uh, check that out. Um, also, yeah, join the Patreon. The video's not done yet, okay? Join the Patreon. Um, I make a whole bunch of widgets that you guys can download. They're really cool. I got this one widget coming out, which will like show whenever you drop frames in your stream and like it'll show your bitrate and like really cool stuff. So uh, we're gonna be releasing that soon. Um, yeah, okay, I'm done talking. <laughs>